Hello beautiful, welcome back to Nat's Beautiful Life. Today we're going to have a little girl talk and we're going to talk about um, hormonal acne and just acne in general and things that we can do to prevent it and also products we can use to treat it. So, um, the reason why I was kind of inspired to do this video is because um, recently I had a little bout with hormonal acne and um, what that is is basically when you get that time of the month or something like that, um, <laughs> you tend to break out and there's reasons for that and um, I may put some links down below to help you understand why that is um, just so you can look that up on your own. Um, but uh, I normally don't, I started my monthly girly times very early on in life. I was nine years old when I had my first, you know, um, period, we'll just say it, okay? And so you can kind of, as you go through puberty and things like that, your face will break out more than it, you know, to normally will as you get older. Some people have acne their whole life, um, and that's because acne is a bacteria, and some people are just more prone to acne all the time, all their life, anyway, and, you know, they have to learn how to treat it and do different things in their life to help control it. Um, but for a lot of us, um, we get that hormonal acne just kind of during that time of the month um, when some people are dealing with pregnancy and times after the pregnancy and things like that. They get hormonal acne. And I have a lot of issues when I have that girly time of the month. Um, so for the past several years, my doctor has been suppressing it uh, medicinally with hormones. Well, a few uh, weeks ago, I had an issue with, you know, insurance and pharmacy and all that, so I missed a couple days of my hormones. And because of that, the hormonal acne went crazy, and kind of like my hair is going crazy. I don't know, I don't know what's happening with my hair. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, um, but, so I had to kind of deal with something I hadn't really had to deal with in a long time. And so I was like, you know what? I know a lot of people go through this every month. So I'd like to do something to kind of help you with your acne issues. Um, even if you are a teenager and you are going through acne like now, just because you're a teenager and teenagers get acne because their bodies are changing and it is due to hormones that that is happening because your hormones are changing. Um, so we are going to talk about that today and things we can do to not only treat it but also practical things we can do in our everyday life that will keep it from happening. And I'm sorry if you hear this jangle jangle. It's my bracelet. And as I mentioned earlier, acne is a bacteria. So you want to remember if you have any open acne areas, like if you've, you know, done something you weren't supposed to, like popped a blemish or something, we'll just call them blemishes, um, then that bacteria, the oil and stuff that's coming out of it is a bacteria and bacteria spreads. So you want to be sure that you don't like pick at your face and then touch your face everywhere else because you're just spreading bacteria. Um, and I wrote myself some notes here, so I'm going to look at that. So, um, ac uh, hormonal acne is a lot of times focused in a general area, and it's going to be more like below the jawline here, or around on the jawline below the cheekbone. So here, and then also underneath the bottom lip, that's where, and I'm looking at myself so I can see where I'm pointing, um, but that is where a lot of the hormonal acne will show up. Some people tend to get them more on their forehead or their T-zone, whatever, but that's okay. Um, and then of course the timing is of course that time of the month or a little before um, or uh, probably about 10 to 15 days after during ovulation. I don't, yeah, I'm really comfortable talking about that. But anyway, um, so some things you can do to treat your acne. Okay. So you've got to remember that a lot of acne treatments are made as systems and they're made to work together. Um, I'm going to mention a couple of different brands right now, 
but um, my favorite right now is this system here. This is the Mary Kay Clear Proof line. I'll put some information down below. I'm not sponsored. I don't get any money for mentioning these products, but I'm just going to mention them to you. And I'm also going to link my blog post down below. I'm going to put some different, um, not only suggestions, but things that you can do differently. Um, we'll get on to that in the video. I hope this video isn't too long, but anyway. Um, so this right here is really great. This system here, you get the uh, cleanser, uh, the acne treatment gel, which is um, benzoyl peroxide. You get the blemish control toner, which I actually do use the blemish control toner twice a day. And I don't really use the system myself because I don't really suffer with acne a lot. But I do have breakouts and I do have oily skin. So I do actually use this blemish control toner twice a day myself. And I love it. And then you have the oil-free moisture moisturizer for acne-prone skin. Now this is a thing that a lot of people who treat their acne, did I just say acne? Acne don't do. They think because they're so oily, they put all these acne, acne, I'm so sorry, I don't know what I can't, it's acne, acne <laughs> treatments on it. And then they start getting flaky skin and everything just looks funny and it just, it's not looking good. And that's because you've forgotten to moisturize. Acne treatments dry things up. And they're also drying your skin up, and that's not necessarily a good thing. The way I like to explain that or present that is, if someone pokes you in the eye, your eye starts to just pour tears. It's trying to protect itself. So the same thing happens with your skin, especially if you're oily. If you over dry it, you over irritate it, you'll wind up with your skin just pouring and spitting oil at you because it's trying to protect itself and make up for that. So you want to make sure you use an, a moisturizer. Now you want to use a moisturizer that is specifically for your type of skin. If you with acne or oily skin you use the same moisturizer that a person with dry skin uses, then that's going to make you break out because it's got too much in it. So you want to use something like this. Now let's say that you don't necessarily have acne as you know a problem that you have all the time but you do get occasional breakouts and your skin's really oily then you want to use still want to use a moisturizer and you want to use something that is going to help control oil because moisturizers do help balance oil so that's really important and another thing that I use this is the last Mary Kay product I'll show you um, is um, this is the botanical effects it's all natural and it has um, products in it that will help you um, stay matte. So it has a moisturizing effect to it, but you will actually have a little bit of a mattified effect, you know, finish on your skin once you put it on because it's helping to control all that oil without over drying your skin. Okay, so I've mentioned the Mary Kay system. I love that system. Um, I will even link some uh, testimonials down below of that. I just really love that system. Now, another great company is Neutrogena. And you can get Neutrogena just about anywhere. And they have systems, basically. And sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult with that because you don't have someone standing there with you discussing your skin conditions with you and, you know, suggesting things. So you kind of have to play it by ear. So um, a good thing to do is go to the Neutrogena website and see what each thing does or, you know, provides. And you've got to really be honest with yourself about your skin and what it does and what it needs and then, um, or how it is. If you can, if you know how your skin is, then you can, you know, kind of decide what you need. Got a little, use a little brain there. But Neutrogena has some really great products um, for varying levels of oiliness and acne and all of that. And another one is Garnier, and I actually use this. Um, this has become one of my favorite things uh, lately, and that is the Blackhead Eliminating Scrub, and it unclogs pores and clears complexion and it has got salicylic acid in it. And that's one reason was why I love that um, toner. I'm gonna take this bracelet off. It's just driving me crazy. Anyway, that's why I really love that toner because that toner that I was talking about earlier in here has the 
salicylic acid in it. So I like the idea of not only am I cleaning and unclogging all those pores, but I'm actually coating my face in some salicylic acid. Um, but this right here has charcoal and things like that in it, and I absolutely love this. It's a new thing um, by Garnier, and it's for oily skin, and it is oil-free and all that, so I do recommend that. So check out some of these Garnier products, too, that are specifically for oily and acne-prone skin. Um, really great company. Uh, and Aveeno also has some great stuff, and Aveeno is good because they don't have any... Um, what are the things I'm looking for? They don't tend to put steroids and things in their products, so check that out. So, um, some other practical things that you can do, we've already talked about systems, and you have to decide on your budget and what you, you know, are more likely to use. It does you no good if you get something and you're not gonna use it. So, find that out, get that. Um, so a couple of things that you can do that are just practical everyday things to help you control your oil and your acne is, uh, number one, how about washing your face twice a day? Um, wash your face at night. Obviously never go, never go to bed at night with your makeup on. It's just going to make things worse. It's going to clog your pores, get in there, even if it is, you know, a, a good makeup for acne prone skin. So never go to bed with your makeup on, wash your face twice a day, and yes that means in the morning. Um, dust falls at night, it is not selective about where it falls, it goes on your face, wash it off. Um, so make sure that you stay clean. Um, another thing is, um, oh, this is a cool thing that you can do as you're out and about. Um, carry some oil blotting sheets, you can get them from just about any company. Elf has them, NYX has them, Mercay has them, um, everybody has them. Keep them in your pocket or your purse or whatever. I have them everywhere. I have them in my purse, I have them at my makeup station over there. That's where I'm pointing and looking. And that is um, just great. And you can use those. It does not take your makeup off. It will just soak all the oil up throughout the day and it almost looks like you've powdered yourself afterwards. And what I really like about this is that guys can use it too and they won't feel funny. Um, a guy probably isn't going to put blotting powder on his face. He's going to feel like it looks like he's putting on makeup. But he might not mind taking something that looks like a tissue and putting that on his face. And they're really, they come in really slim packets so they'll fit in his back pocket or whatever. Those are a great thing to help um, suck that oil, keep it from getting in the pores, and it just helps keep you clean and clear throughout the day. And of course, Clean and Clear and Clearasil and all those people, they have those types of things as well. Um, another thing, I, this is a very practical thing that you can do, and I highly recommend that you do it if you are very oily, just period, and especially if you're acne prone. And that is wash your pillowcase at least once a week or at least change it um, once a week. Cotton is what most of our pillowcases are made out of. Cotton will actually soak up oil from your face. It will soak up that bacteria and stuff from your, your blemishes. And then when you go to bed at night, all of that stuff is sucked into that pillow and you're just laying your face on oil and bacteria again and it's disgusting so you want to wash your pillowcase if you are really oily and you have a real problem then more often maybe every other day um, I met a girl recently who changes her pillowcase every single night because her skin was so bad and she finally got it cleared up and yeah She's like adamant about keeping that pillowcase clean. Um, another one is you can use a silk pillowcase. Um, it doesn't soak up anything. Anywho, um, exercise. Uh, this one was kind of um, not really a surprise to me because just being healthier in general will keep your skin clearer, but um, it has to do with the blood flow through your skin and your face and all that. Um, so I was kind of you know, interested in hearing about that. So doing a little exercising. Um, another thing is this is important for you girls. Okay. Clean your phone. All right. I'm one of those people who either 
does the you the YouTube the Bluetooth oh my or the you know the hands free or something but you know a lot of girls you see if you're out and about if you're just talking on the phone out in public you're you know you're not really like trying to talk like this you've got that thing shoved up against your face and a lot of people have it shoved up against their face a lot and it just look what's on here my fingers um and you know makeup oil bacteria all of that clean your phone mm. hard one for me because when I'm at my desk or something I'm always like this but in deep thought I'm like hmm really hmm. I always have my hands in my face so that's a hard one for me to remember to keep my hands out of my face you want to limit your sun exposure um, first reason is because a lot of acne treatments have the salicylic acid, maybe even retinol, things like that, and they do not mix with the sun. It's not good for them. Um, they will actually um, react and even make you burn. So you don't want to do that. And also, you want to limit your sun exposure just because that's going to dry you out, irritate your skin, and then what happens? More oil. So just kind of limit the sun exposure. Um, doesn't mean you could never go in the sun, just limit it or use a really good SPF when you are out in the sun and Neutrogena actually has a very good oil free one that's just made for the face and that is one that I use and I really like that one. Um, what else do I have? Oh, good, good, good one. Limit your sugar and your dairy and eat vegetables. Um, and you want to add more water into your diet when you have um, acne issues or if you have a flare-up. You want to go ahead and get some more water in there. It flushes your system out and it really um, will show in your countenance, which is your face. And so you want to do that. So um, if you don't like the taste of water, I know a lot of people don't, I will list some... Uh, different alternatives down on my um, my beauty blog or my blog that I'm going to do on this and you can check that out and I'll give you some um, tips on how to drink and eat more healthily and cleaner so that you can keep a clean clear face. Um, another thing, let's see. These are just, I'm just, I wrote it down. So I wrote it down so I won't forget anything. All right. So let's look. I'll, I'll hold it up here so I won't keep looking down. Um, we've got uh, exfoliate, so something like this. Um, dead skin. Why do I keep saying um? I am so sorry. I'm usually not this guy brain, but anywho, I uh, just really think that this is an important subject, and so I wanted to get it out there. But anyway, exfoliate. So if you've got dead skin, things like that happening, the flaking, um, skin happening, you want to get it off there. Uh, so do that. Hair products. This one's kind of a surprise for me um, because I think about this more like if people have like body blemishes or acne, but it even says um, that if you have super fragranced hair products um, or things that have like a lot of chemicals and things in there, it can really just kind of attach itself to your face and it's like make sure you rinse your shampoo out completely before you get out of the shower your conditioners all of that stuff and be careful of how you put your hairspray on and it recommends more all-natural products and things like that I think we're almost done so it recommends I read this that vegetables of course are good because it helps um, you know it's eating healthy and eating clean is good for your face but it says especially cabbage type products. So that would be products, vegetables. So that would be like broccoli, um, obviously cabbage, things like that, uh, Brussels sprouts. <laughs> those are all cabbage type things. So um, those type of things are good for your skin apparently. And uh, even though I am a vegetarian, I do have stomach issues and I can't digest a lot of things, so not to go into that. Cabbage is one of the things I'm not allowed to eat, so whatever. But if you can eat cabbage or broccoli, eat just some broccoli. Um, you can cook it, you can eat it raw, whatever you want to do. It's great. Uh, and this is a, a st st statistic that I think is interesting. It says that 63% of acne-prone women get hormonal acne flare-ups around that time of the month. So... 
uh, you are not alone in this. And I will leave the link to that article, which was specifically about hormonal acne, down below. So, I hope this video is not ridiculously long. It looks like it's 20-something minutes, so I'm looking in the camera. But, like I said, I just really think this is an important subject that um, a lot of people struggle and deal with acne and hormonal acne. And, like, I don't get blemishes that much anymore um, once I got past that middle school kind of puberty thing I kind of cleared up but I still suffered with hormonal acne that time of the month you know until I stopped having them because the doctor made them stop so anyway um so I know what this is like and but when I broke out so bad from the hormonal acne that I had this week I literally felt like my face was Quasimodo face I just was like not feeling good about myself and so I understand and I just can't imagine that a lot of you especially if you're already you're still in that middle school to high school situation where you are still suffering from acne quite a bit that just pop my knuckles I'm sorry um that you know you must feel that way you don't look that bad I didn't look that bad, but it is like an emotional thing. Uh, so I just want you to know you're not alone. It is very common. Like I said, 63% of acne prone women. So that's people who are, well, can get acne at all. You know, <laughs> those women do suffer from it as well. And that's just women. Men get it. Um, my brother has suffered from acne really bad and had to use like a bunch of systems he even got the fractal laser thing um so it's it's a thing that a lot of people suffer with and so yeah that is all i'm gonna say i don't want this video to be like an hour long but like i said i think it's important and i want you guys to know that there are simple things that you can do to um help curb your acne. So I will put a link to the blog post that goes with this video down below. It will have suggestions on um, things. Sometimes when we try, we're like, we need to stop doing things, then we don't put good things in the place of it, and then it doesn't work for us. So I'm going to do my best to help you through that. So if you have any questions or comments, put them down below. You can also comment or ask me things on the blog. And that is all. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, happy new school year, I guess. I don't know how you feel about school, but that is pretty much it for me today. Have a great day, gorgeous.